Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllowyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at bond enthalpies. Now bond enthalpies, as the name suggests, is the uh, amount of energy that is either used up or given out uh, per mole of bond. Um, and we're going to look at something called average bond enthalpy. We're going to look at um, the length of the bond and how that's affected by its strength. And we're also going to do a, a quick calculation, which is a typical chemistry uh, question that they could have in an exam. So we're going to start with um, what we mean by a bond enthalpy. Now enthalpy, as you may know, um, actually comes in two values. You can have an exothermic uh, negative value or you can have an endothermic positive value. Now we can link them two values into um, uh, bond breaking and bond forming. So when we want to break a bond, uh, as you can see up here, um, we describe that as an endothermic reaction. That means that we need energy, so energy is taken into the um, reaction to break then bonds, and it's taken in from the surroundings. So we describe that as an endothermic process when we need to break bonds. When we form bonds in products, uh, we call that exothermic, and energy is actually given out. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute uh, when we look at the calculation. But I just want to look at this bit here, which is the bond length and strength. Now, um, you can have different length bonds, um, so, for example, you might have a single bond, a uh, double bond, and a triple bond between um, two carbon atoms. Now, um, the, as we go further down, um, we have something like a triple bond, and um, actually the bond length gets a little bit shorter. Um, so, and that's because of the attractive forces between the, um, the nucleus of the atoms and the electrons on the, outer, on, on the outer side of the atom as well. So you can see that the bond length gets shorter, and because the bond length is shorter, Actually, this requires a lot more energy to break them, but also when these bonds are being formed, a lot of energy is actually given out. Now, when we're talking about energy, um, we're actually talking about what we call an average bond enthalpy, and no bond is actually the same value. So, for example, you might have a carbon-carbon a bond in ethane uh, and compare that to a carbon-carbon bond in, say, something like um, benzene and the value of them too, even though they're both single bonds, uh, can actually be different. Um, and because um, um, the reason why is because they're in different environments and um, obviously have different effects on the bond enthalpy. Now, because the bond enthalpies are between in between carbons and other molecules uh, and other atoms are different in other molecules, then we have to come up with what we call an average bond enthalpy. Uh, and this is the value that you would see in the data book um, and is the is basically the average of all the enthalpies, or as many different uh, bond enthalpies as we can, and we take an average, and we call this an average bond enthalpy. Now, this is important to know, especially for your exam, because bond enthalpies, like I said, um, differ, and we use an average instead. So the value you will get in your calculations will only ever be an average, and it might differ from what it is um, if it was a specific bond that's been mentioned. So just be aware of that, that these are only average values, and that's all we can do, really. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at calculating the enthalpy change of a reaction when you're given data uh, to do with bond enthalpy. So you can see here that the enthalpy change of a reaction is the total energy that's needed to break the bonds, and we know that this is a endothermic process because we need to put heat energy into our reaction um, and we give this a positive value as well for positive and um, we subtract this away from the total energy um, released to make bonds in the products and we call this exothermic and that's why we give it a negative value um, which is over here. So we're going to look at this very specific example here. So we have half lots of, N of N2 which is nitrogen and one and a half moles of fluorine, and uh, that will produce uh, one mole of nitrogen trifluoride. Um, now, what you've been given is a set of data, and you can see here that these are the different bonds, enthalpies. Um, now, this is the mean bond enthalpy, so this is the amount of energy that's um, either needed or to break the bonds or given out when the bonds are formed, but this is important because this is actually per mole of substance, so this is okay if we have one mole of bond, but you can see that in this equation we have different amounts. We have one mole here, one and a half here, and half over there. Now, what we've got to do is split this into two halves. We work out our bonds, the amount of energy, the total amount of energy needed to break all of the bonds in our reactants, and that's the assumption that we make, that we break every single bond there, uh, and then we work out the amount of energy that's released when we reform to make new bonds 
uh, and to make a new compound. So we're going to do the um, breaking bit first. So I'm going to do this in blue. So this is breaking first. So remember breaking is um, endothermic. So we add up our total amount. So you can see that we have half an N2. So N2 is N triple bond N. Because we've only got half mole, then what we do is we do half times by 945. So it's very important to take into account that half there. Uh, and if we put that on our calculator, we should get 472.5. Okay, and that's kilojoules per mole. Okay, so quickly put that on there. Uh, and we've also got, so we've sorted that one out, we've also got one and a half F2. So there's our um, FF bond. Uh, it's got an entropy per mole of 159. So um, we're going to do one and a half times by 159, because that's the number uh, of moles that we have of F2. Uh, if we put that into our calculator, um, then we should get 238.5. Uh, and again, that's kilojoules per mole. Right, and if we add them two up, because um, it's the total energy, so we've got to add both of them up, this is the amount of energy required to break them, uh, it's 711, uh, and that's kilojoules per mole. Right, now, because this is um, energy going in, we can say that's positive. So we're going to underline that in blue, so this is positive, it's an endothermic reaction. Okay. We then obviously have to form our bonds as well, so we are um, making the bonds, so I'll put make there. Okay, right, so we're making NF3, now you can see here that we've actually got three um, NF bonds being made, so we've got, obviously that would just be one NF, but we've got three of them, so we need to do three times by 278. Sometimes it's a good idea to draw um, your displayed formula with all the bonds showing, and that makes sure that you've got every single bond, because you've got to make sure you get every bond, otherwise your calculation obviously won't come out with the right answer. Okay, so we've got NF3, so we're going to multiply, and we're going to do 3 times by 278, so put that on there, uh, and you should get an answer, put that into a calculator, of 834, and again, that would be kilojoules per mole, um, and because that's our final answer, there we just put uh, minus, because this is making, and making is obviously releasing energy, 834, so I'll put that there, and then you can see that actually straight away that we actually get more energy given out when we're breaking them, uh, than we're making them, than actually the energy we need to put in to break them in the first place. So we put this into our calculator, so we do um, 711, uh, and we're going to subtract that by the total energy um, released, which is 834. So if we just ignore that negative sign there, um, so I'll just rub them out. So um, this is 834, so we do 711, put that there, minus 834, and you should get a final answer of minus 123, kilojoules per mole. Now you can see that obviously you can look at this value here and you'll see that it's exothermic. This reaction gives out heat energy. And the reason why is because um, more energy is actually given out when we're making uh, the um, bond products or the products with bonds in and uh, then we actually then actually breaking them. Um, so that's how you do it. Just make sure you take into account every single bond. Make sure that you take into account the molar amounts as well attached to that. Uh, and make sure you value understand that this value here is an average uh, bond enthalpy. Um, it's not a specific one. So there may be a disparity, um, like a discrepancy, sorry, between um, this value and maybe a value that they might give you in the exam. But just be aware that that's a mean value. That's it. Hope that helps. Bye.